standing at this stage 200 years ago, about 90% of you would either be living on a farm or working in agriculture. We fast forward to today, that's just about 1% of you are involved in agriculture. This has represented a massive loss in human intelligence on the farm. It's not that the farmers were smarter in the 1800s, it's just there was a lot more of them seeing and doing. They were hand weeding like large scale production crops and being able to focus their attention to weedier parts of the field. This massive loss in, in human capacity on the farm has caused a lot of constraints in our production systems, and especially at a time when we are needing to scale up our food production, we have rising costs and in inputs. I mean, we have so many challenges in agriculture. Our, our pests are becoming more resistant to the existing chemistries that we have. So how do we deal with these issues? We need to get more localized with our management to get more productive and efficient. And we refer to this as site-specific management. And it's my perspective, and I'm sure many of yours, that the way to get there is to increase autonomy and robotic systems in agriculture. You know, I get asked all the time, are the robots going to replace all our jobs? Are, are we going to be you know, out of work? What are we going to do when there's robots everywhere? Well, remember now, that exodus has already happened. Right? We've already gone from 90% of folks involved in agriculture down to 1%. And this massive loss in human intelligence has been replaced by large-scale industrial agriculture that in con continuously um, homogenizes our management across the landscape. For example, we're now irrigating or putting down fertilizer or, or our pesticides uniformly across fields even as big as a 400-acre field. And as we move towards more homogenizing of our management and our farmers have less ability to be flexible and nimble, this creates a real challenge in our farming system. Sure, we're able to scale up the removal and the, and the, you know, the, the delivery of these foods to our consumer, but it's really treating the field like a homogenized system, and it turns out it's not, right? Our fields are messy. We got really wet parts of the field where things don't grow very well. We've got parts of the field that are really dry. We have parts of our field that it doesn't matter how many nutrients that we apply to them. They don't get a yield response. We shouldn't be fertilizing those parts of the field. And then there's other parts of these fields that would increase their yields if we were increasing the amount of nutrients that we put into them. But because we're managing them as a single unit, we're not able to get to that site-specific precision agriculture that would allow farmers to be able to do more, uh, be, able to, be able to produce more, and do this in an environmentally sustainable way. Fortunately, we have entered that digital revolution where we are transforming the way we can use computer vision and AI in agriculture. It is enabling us to manage even at the localized plant level, right? So we can actually start to put down nutrients or water and place it at the right rate and at the right time and, and spatially varied across the field. This is, this is going to transform the ability for our farmers to be more productive and efficient and reduce their costs. However, we're still about five to 15 years away from having like full autonomy from robotic systems in agriculture. What's the bottleneck to this? The bottleneck is the ability to train computers to see, right? Just like when you were really young and your parents taught you what was hot, what was cold, what was a spoon, what was a cup, we need to train our computers to do the same thing, right? We need to train it. What is the species that's out there? We need to annotate these images, right? Then we, and then if that plant is under stress, what kind of stress? We need more imagery for that, right? Is it an insect? Okay, well, we need some more imagery for that. And what type of insect? This is a massive challenge to undertake to be able to digitize agriculture. Right now, most of this training data exists just among some very large companies that can afford to build these libraries and deliver precision ag solutions. And these are often very narrow scope solutions. It's like, what can they make 
profit on that, is, that allows them to invest that much time into building these computer vision solutions to train the computers. We want everybody to have this training data, right? We want the researcher on the public side, the researcher on the private side, startups, large mature companies, they need to all have access to this material so they can build intelligence and advance the autonomy on farms. However, we can't crowdsource this the way we do in so many other industries. You all have been participating in the annotating and training data for years. Every time you go on your computer and you log into some secure website, you're training the computer on what letters are on that screen. You're finding out which squares in these images have stop signs. You're providing this crowdsourced value to many industries. The problem is we don't have this analog in agriculture. We don't have a way to get you involved in helping us annotate these images. It's a real problem. And the, the bigger problem is that agriculture is a million and one computer vision solutions. Sure, industry is going to knock off some really hard ones and the ones that, that we can build in, uh, markets around. But there's millions of challenges out there. There's all sorts, there's so much climate, soil, management, crop intersections that are happening all over the place. You're not gonna get industry to solve that problem and build all of that training data to digitize agriculture and then make it available to all to use. It's a lot of work and money and investment. It's my perspective that the private sector could play a key role in this. Now, currently it's the wild, wild west. Everybody out there is, is taking some imagery, they're building a neural net, so that's you know, how we train a computer vision model to see something and then do something. There's no organization, it's really a bit chaotic, and so in order for us to be able to create this asset, this public good, we need to get organized, we need to coordinate, we need to be standards, we need to be able to scale up and rapidly build this training data too so that we're meeting the demands of these robotic systems. So at USDA, how we're approaching this is in a number of ways, and here's one of them. We built this robotic platform that's out there continuously imaging. We've got this black background, black soils, we have uh, uh, you know, uh, black uh, pots, all of this so we can automate assigning labels of these plants, what the species is, what kind of stress is it under? And this is just one form factor, right? We have other ways that we're doing this, but this gives you a sense of how we approach this. And our goal is we've got, you know, a three or four of these across the country right now is to start moving these into all of our different cropping systems. And what's so great about the public sector being able to do this is we're the, eye, we're the boots on the ground, right? We're in, ARS is in 95, uh, uh, 95 locations across the country. We're connected to every single cropping system, every single type of management practice that exists. We're the ones with the expertise and the knowledge to help curate and build this type of training data. So let's nerd out a little bit. I'm, you know, you do have a scientist on the screen. Let's learn something about computer vision. So like when we're out there automating, you know, with AI to cut out these plants and isolate these images, we can then build new images from these images that we've isolated. So now we can superimpose them on tilled ground. We can put them on no-till ground. We can put some residue in there. We can train for all the types of environments that the eyes of the computer will see from the sensor and the camera when it's driving across. We could put them into mixtures. We can overlap them. We can create all the real-world conditions that are out there. And this is just one of the paths in which we scale up this technology. It's really our goal to see cameras everywhere. Right? Where farmers are driving across the field anywhere between two, eight, ten times in a season. There should be cameras on that equipment when they're going out there. Seeing, delivering those eyes, those many eyes that we've lost since the, the reduction in the amount of humans out on the landscape, bringing that knowledge back to the farmers so they can make more precise and sustainable cropping systems and practices. Here you see we're doing this with a modular cam system that we're developing. This camera system can be mounted on any kind of tractor, a robot. This is a picture of it being used in a breeding program in Tanzania on this little unicycle that we built, or it could be held handheld so that breeders, plant scientists, and farmers can be using these low-cost, accessible camera systems to build intelligence on their farm for more sustainable production systems. 
Thank you.